Welcome to MyPal, your AI Second Brain. I'm Sylvia, one of the founders of MyPal, and here's how you can quickly set up your AI Second Brain to start boosting your productivity by 10, 20x today. First, let's get started with knowledge sources. Knowledge sources are where you can give your second brain extra knowledge and information for them to serve you better. To start training your second brain on additional knowledge, it's very simple. You can upload a file of any type. We support PDF, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, CSV, EPUB, or even a video or an audio. You can also drop any URL here. This could be a YouTube video or a blog or anything else. Or you can simply type in some text and recording your voice here. It's just, it will just take a few moments uh, for the training to be completed. And as you can see, I have gathered a lot of knowledge sources in my knowledge hub here. Once your knowledge hub is ready, you can start building your team of AI agents. Think of AI agents as your own army of AI employees that are designed to perform exceptionally well at certain tasks and that you can summon anytime, anywhere you want uh, for them to support you with these tasks. Now, uh, to start a new agent, you can start from scratch, start from a template that we have prepared here, or you can also generate with AI so you could get started more easily. For now, let's uh, see this agent that I have prepared here uh, to see what it takes to start an agent on my pal. First, you would need to uh, specify the identity of the agent. So what uh, is he or she uh, supposed to do or any requirements and expectations uh, for he or she when they are summoned to work. Uh, you can think of the background part as the job description for your agent. Then you can further train the agent on extra knowledge sources besides the common knowledge or the common sense that any agent would have. These knowledge sources you can easily import from the knowledge hub that you have built in the previous step. You can also add ex external knowledge sources such as Google, YouTube, or ASIF, so the agents would be able to search from these sources as well. Tools is also another interesting setting that will allow you to give extra powers to your agent. Uh, so beyond just text, uh, now with tools, your agent will be able to respond in other formats. They can generate mind maps, flashcards, quizzes, or even images. So that will extend their capability beyond just um, text-based responses. So depending on your use case, you should select the tools that are relevant. Now you can even take your agents to the next level by further customizing the output. So in the output, you can select a language, uh, you can specify your design format as well as connect it to a style. With this style, your agent will mimic a certain style that you want. For me, I have the Sylvia's LinkedIn style, but for you, it could be your own company's brain voice um, or uh, anything similar like that. Uh, to create a new style is also very simple. You can import content from your knowledge sources here or paste any content here and our, our platform will automatically analyze to understand the style and add it to uh, the agent for you. Training examples is also a very important uh, section where you can add uh, examples of good answers so your agents can learn from and improve over time. Now, uh, that's it for an agent. When they, uh, your team of agents are ready, you can start summoning them to work by calling out them here uh, and uh, ask them to do anything for you. For example, I could uh, ask uh, this agent to write a post about uh, this topic and uh, to give uh, this agent the context of the topic, I will select this video, uh, building chatbots for various purposes that I used to uh, create uh, a few weeks ago uh, to ask it to write a post based on this information. Now, let's start. And as you can see, this is uh, the response uh, by the agent. So uh, it's, it's very straightforward, right? But when you are working with these agents, sometimes you may need the ability to share these agents with others. For example, I have this uh, EFL teaching assistant right here that I have built. With this teaching assistant, uh, I would be able to ask it anything about EFL, uh, English uh, as a foreign language, uh, and it can also provide my maps, flashcards, quizzes uh, to help me practice. But the problem here is the purpose for me to create this kind of agent is to share it with my students. Uh, so that they will be able to interact with this uh, tutor too. In that case, it would not make sense for me just keep uh, to just keep this agent in my workspace, right? Uh, at that point, you would uh, want may, you may want to create a chatbot for uh, this agent. Think of the chatbot as uh, a publishable version of your agent. 
Uh, so to create a chatbot, you all you need to do is to give it some general information, what the name of the chatbot is, some description, its profile picture. You can also add, um, so, uh, you can also assign an agent to run this chatbot as well as connect it to knowledge sources. And furthermore, you can uh, have more customization uh, to like um, specify how this chatbot should behave. For example, you can enable user info collection. You can customize the chat interface like this, or you can customize uh, the manage the access and security part uh, when sharing your agent with others to avoid abuse. Now, when you publish this agent, you will get different ways uh, to share this chatbot with others, whether it is uh, via a link like this one, or uh, via an iframe to embed it onto your website, or uh, via a chat bubble widget that will stay in a corner of your website. Once this chatbot is live, uh, your students or your audience or your customers can now interacting with the chatbot without uh, having a um, MyPal account. So they can ask anything. For example, quiz me. Let's quiz about present tense. So these are the quizzes generated. I can uh, select my answers, submit the answer, and I will automatically get the feedback as well. Now, as you work with your AI agents on MyPal, sometimes you may encounter tasks that involve multiple steps that not only any single agent would be able to tackle. In that case, you may uh, refer to our multi-agent workflow feature. Essentially, with this multi-agent workflow, you can connect multiple agents together into a workflow and you can specify how they want to, you want the agents to work together to solve a task and the data will be passed along these AI agents for them to effectively uh, collaborate with each other. Let's take a look at this podcast research workflow as an example. In this workflow, we would take in some information about the podcast episode, the guest, the target audience, and a link to the guest profile. With all of this information, we will then execute four steps, uh, each executed by a specialized agent. To demonstrate, we can run this workflow together to see how it works. I will take this as the guest uh, profile URL. Then I will specify the episode theme, what could be AI for work, the guest persona is AI founder, female founder, and AI engineer, and the target audience could be knowledge workers. With all this in input in place, we are ready to start this workflow. And as you can see, unlike uh, just working with one single agent at the same time, here, all of these steps will be executed sequ sequentially, starting with this step, then this step, then the topic selection step, and finally, the question formulation step. Now, the powerful thing about MyPal is that you have full control over how this workflow uh, should work. You can specify uh, what kind of input to take in, and you can also design your own workflow, how many steps to be executed and what those steps are. That will give you an opportunity to customize it to work the exact uh, way you want. Um, to start a workflow, you can start building from scratch, or you can start from a template that we have prepared here. Uh, or you can also uh, start by generating with AI. So uh, that's a quick look in.